Welcome to Judgment Decision Making. I'm Dr. Badia. Now we're going to discuss when is a good time for a nudge? When do we need a nudge? So when do we need a nudge? You know, people will need nudges when the types of decisions they're making are difficult and when they're rare. If they don't receive prompt feedback, and if they have trouble understanding a situation. So I'm going to go through quite a few examples of each of these so you can understand when is it really appropriate for a nudge. So really any type of decision that is a fraught choice is likely a good opportunity for a nudge. Problems arise when people must make decisions that test their self-control. So anytime you're trying to make a decision where you really have to use your self-control to kind of override what you would naturally do, that is a situation where a nudge could be very helpful for you. Self-control issues are most likely to arise when our choices and their consequences are separated in time, when we make a choice now, but the effects of that choice will be seen in the future. That's when it's really hard to use our self-control because there's a, a delayed reaction to whatever we're doing. Now, some of these include investment goods and examples of this are exercise, flossing, dieting. These are all things that we have to do now that are time consuming. They take some effort. They might be kind of boring and the costs are born immediately. We have to deal with that, but the benefits are delayed. We won't know the effects of exercise till we exercise for a few weeks. We won't know the effects of flossing until we go to the dentist. So we have to do something hard and effortful now and we'll see the effects of it later. That's a situation where a nudge can be really helpful to kind of get over the self-control hurdle of uh, actually enacting those things. Another is for sinful goods. I think this is the one I think most about. Um, these are things like trying to not smoke as much, uh, drink alcohol, have jumbo donuts, those types of things. These um, are hard because the pleasures are born immediately. When you eat a donut, you get the pleasure of eating a donut, but you suffer the consequences later. I think these ones are harder for me because when I'm tired, when I'm running around, you know, the feeling, the good feeling of having, you know, a few too many cups of coffee <laughs> um, or a sugary donut seems great in the moment, almost sometimes like you even need it. And then you think, well, you know, one donut isn't going to hurt. But of course, you um, have the negative effects of that down the line. And this is really a good example of how um, these fraught choices we could really make a more effective decision if we had a helpful nudge to guide us down the path that we would like to take. So another important thing to consider is you would really need a nudge. Um, the most important nudges are for these difficult types of decisions. We're more likely to need a help, help picking the right mortgage than choosing a loaf of bread, right? You know, it might be complicated, your decision which loaf of bread to pick, but maybe it doesn't really matter. Maybe you pick the wrong bread, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but picking the wrong college, for example, that can have huge effects on your entire life. Those really big decisions are when it is important to potentially make a nudge for yourself or be engaged with companies that help nudge you in, in the right direction. Now, Another thing to think about is frequency. Even hard problems become easier with practice. And fortunately, some of life's most important decisions do not come with many opportunities to practice. This is situations like picking a college, picking a student loan, buying a house, selecting a spouse. And it's, you know, it's hard. You might do these things just once in your life. And maybe you could get better, right? But you don't have enough practice to do so. So a, a nudge that could guide you in the right decision would be really really helpful, particularly with these low frequency, high risk types of decisions. Now, nudges are very useful when you don't receive very much feedback. Well, even practice does not make perfect if people lack good
good opportunities to learn. Imagine trying to get better at golf if you're blindfolded and you don't see where the ball goes. Be impossible <laughs> to get better at golf, right? You need feedback on how effective you are. This is why um, I really love devices like this. So I'm a runner, not a, I'm a jogger, <laughs> I'll say. I've jogged my whole life. I never really got very good at it. It was just something I did for exercise. And it was because I was getting no feedback. I wasn't trying to improve. I wasn't looking at my time. I just thought it was something to do to stay healthy. But then my husband got me this watch that tracks a bunch of metrics for my running. I can look at my cadence. I can look at my speed. I can look at my heart rate and many, many other things. And now that I have feedback, I'm able to get significantly better because I can work on improving certain things. Before that, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know that my cadence was really short. Um, so having the appropriate feedback is very important for improving your decisions and um, maximizing your effort to output. And this is the theory behind the weekly quizzes. Some of you might be tired of doing these weekly quizzes. The reason that I think these quizzes are so important is it gives you regular feedback about your performance in this class. Most classes have a midterm and a final. You don't get very much feedback at all about how you're doing and you don't have very much room to improve. You know, if you bomb the midterm, you might do better on the final, but your grade's still going to be pretty low. So these weekly quizzes are a way of me giving you a nudge to give you feedback on how well you're doing in the class and allow you to update and change your performance based on the feedback that I give you. So it's also kind of tricky when we don't always know what we want. These are When we don't know what we want, these types of decisions can be useful for a nudge. It is particularly hard for people to make a good decision when they have trouble translating the choices they face into the experiences they will have. Example, it is really hard comparing capital appreciation to dynamic dividend fund. Do you know what those are? You know, you can read spreadsheets about the differences between the two. But the problem is you have to translate the information about these different funds to something that you actually care about. So instead, what would be more helpful is if an, an, that if we communicate to the investor how the choice between the funds affects her spending power. And I've noticed this as well, picking insurance, health insurance. Um, you know, it, there's so many different options and you can kind of compare and contrast, but ultimately if you're told how your experience going to the hospital, if you get sick would be different across the different plans, then it would help us make a more effective decision. But the systems aren't organized to give us helpful nudges. Sometimes systems are created to obscure the choice so that you make the wrong choice based on heuristics. And I think insurance is um, really one of those cases. Okay, summary here. People may need a nudge for choices that have a delayed effect. We make a decision now that affects us in the future. Those that are very difficult, high-risk decisions. When the decision is infrequent and we don't get practice making the decision. Um, when we get poor feedback, where you're not told about how our performance on that choice is, and when the relationship between the choice and experience is ambiguous, when it's unclear how the choices that are offered to us will actually affect our experiences, then we're not really sure which option we want. So I hope this was a helpful summary of the types of decisions that would be useful for a nudge. Mm -hmm.